Earlier this week, I sat down with, with uh, Gamma, and we recorded like this hell long interview. I actually had to edit it down a lot because we were just talking about everything, man, about music. And there's tons of parties he's playing at coming up, and I wanted to get him on the air to, to talk about that. And he threw down this incredible progressive uh, breaks mix for us, which is not necessarily what he's known for, but it was phenomenal, man. And you are going to hear it next. I'm serious. <laughs> You're going to love this. Gamma to close out the program tonight here on X Beats at 106.5 KWD. That happens right now. X Beats is brought to you commercial free by Twisted, Sacramento's premier smoke shop in Midtown and Citrus Heights. KWOD Sacramento. X Beats. Commercial free. A world of subculture. Music. Icons and leaders. In a world of conformists and observers. Only on 106.5 KWOD. Special guest DJ set tonight from Gamma. And I've been seeing your name uh, on, on flyers for a while now. You've been you've just been playing out everywhere. And uh, we're going to come back and talk to you in just a little bit uh, about, you know, what's what's up and coming for you, what you, what you got going on, because I know you, you're really busy. But for now, though, I want everybody to hear what you do because it's phenomenal and you brought us a mix to play. And yep. what's this is a little bit different for you because you, you tend to play at varying styles. You're kind of more known, like you said, for techno and stuff. Right, but right. the mix that you brought us is going to be a little more on the uh, it's, break it's tip. Progressive and, breaks. Uh, I would say, like, I play um, I play a lot of different styles. It really kind of depends on the venue, the crowd, the people, uh, what the theme of the event is. Uh, I really like to mix it up. I I mean, I'm mainly known for playing techno, and it really, it really just kind of depends, you know, what the crowd wants. Like, if I'm in Reno, you're pretty much guaranteed to see me playing some really hard techno. Mm-hmm. But uh, down here, we do a lot of outdoor events and stuff, and uh, the more outdoors you get, the more earthy I want to get with the music. And depending on the slot, you know, if it's, like, uh, middle of the night, then I'm going to play some harder stuff, and if it's a little bit later in the evening, then... Uh, I'm going to play a little bit more progressive and uplifting. Awesome. So versatility is the name of Gamma's game then. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's check it out. It's a mix from Gamma tonight here on XP, so 106.5 KWOD. X Beats on 106.5 KWOD. Hanging out with Gamma tonight here. Our guest DJ set from him and uh, incredible. <laughs> the amazing thing about you is that you're able to cross that bridge of, you know, stylistically. You, it's, it's not just for you a matter of only being known for one style of thing like we right. were talking about earlier. Could you give us a little background about how long you've been doing this? Maybe some of the people not are familiar with you, right. um, where you came from and how you got started being a DJ. Uh, well, you know, I grew up in the Sierra Nevada foothills up... Uh, just outside of Sacramento. Sacramento is pretty much my hometown. And uh, as I was growing up, I was exposed to, you know, all the music that was coming out in the early 90s. You know, a lot of that, like, hip, the hip-hop, rock and roll and everything. And uh, in the mid-90s, uh, just a lot of electronic music, really. You know, the whole Euro dancing was really big. And my sister is about seven years older than me, and so she was in college. And she was listening to that stuff all the time. And I was getting that kind of through her, but it wasn't really for me, you know. I mean, I liked it, and I, I liked certain elements, but it never quite stuck with me until uh, about halfway through high school. I started hearing some music uh, from Orbital, Chemical Brothers, Prodigy, that really just blew my mind. I was, I mean, I was in the thralls of, like, listening to Lagwagon and, <laughs> you know, uh, No Use for a Name. I mean, I was really punk rock skateboarder drinking 40s every day and you know it's, it's funny to me because uh it seems like those mentalities are almost really compatible when you hear really hard slam and techno it's kind of the, the punk rock of electronic music in a yeah. lot of ways you it, know it really is uh, a lot of the, the techno that i play from the uk comes from these guys called the liberators and they run this company called stab forever and they're a lot of them are really old school gutter punk kind of people and it just seems that that kind of aggressive nature's been kind of transformed from something destructive to something a little bit more constructive, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and they they started this music called Acid Techno, and that's uh, I've been playing that on and off since '97 when I first started. I was buying those records down in the mix, you know. And a lot of the Acid Techno stuff that you're talking about is kind of combining the more modern style production with some of the older. Well, I mean, Acid elements. Techno originally came from the idea. It was a little bit faster, almost more trancey sounding. Mm-hmm. And it came from uh, a specific instrument, which is the uh, Roland TB303, which is 
predominantly known as the acid sound. And it makes that sound. Yeah, I love real, that. Real, real kind of rubber bandy. I love that watery sound. I call them the tweaky sounds, right. but that's just my <laughs> description of it. Right. So, uh, acid techno kind of came from the acid house scene, which was really huge in like Manchester and England and stuff in the very early and late late eighties, early nineties, and the Liberators and everybody really kind of weren't really into Acid House, but they didn't like Acid Trance because they didn't like all the melodies. So they kind of made their own style at that point, and voila, Acid Techno. Now they've really moved away from the 303. I mean, they still incorporate it, uh, but they've really kind of branched out because a lot of people thought that they were stagnant with that sound. What do you say to people who describe that stuff as, as like emotionless or, or soulless music because I, I hear that description all the time well there's no words there's not a lot of melody I, I don't get it it's just a bunch of loops and it's a bunch of drug right. music and blah 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 right. what, what do you say to those kind of people who maybe don't you know get it well you know I mean it's like anything you know uh, you don't get anything you don't want to you know and that and that's what it comes down to I mean you can look at a painting and never understand it until you choose to understand it and I mean it's like country music I don't really necessarily understand country music but I'm sure if I really wanted to and I thought about it and I listened to enough of it, I'd really start to see the subtle differences. Well, where was your first gig? How did you <laughs> what, what, How did you actually right. start actually getting on the tables? and um, Was it house parties, that kind of thing? Yeah, or? definitely. How like, long ago was that? God, the very first time I ever played out was uh, New Year's Eve 1997. A bunch of my friends were doing a house party and didn't have anybody to play music. And I, I thought that at that point, uh, you know, someone kind of needed to step up to the plate you right. know and my birthday falls three days after christmas so i had a bunch of money and went out to in the mix and i dropped like 300 dollars on uh a bunch of new vinyl and at you know um rented some equipment because i didn't even own it and borrowed some and i really just pieced together a system and ended up playing like a four or five hour set i had no idea what i was doing but how, how did you progress to actually playing events after that well gosh you know it's really hard like at the time, um, there weren't really that many trans DJs in Sacramento. Like, I mean, I could count them on one hand easily. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that same exact time, I was going to a lot of Bay Area parties and kind of got caught, swept up in the whole Frequency 8, Cyber Trance, Acid Trance movement. I mean, it was a really kind of a crossover between techno, trance, and just weird sounds i mean it was it was monumental in in the history of electronic music for the west coast and uh i started bringing that music back because i'd i'd be down there every week and i started playing it here and uh even though i wasn't that great of a dj people were just blown away because they said that the track selection that i was playing you know people come up to me all the time and be like you know i never liked trance until i heard you and I, I, you know, I was always like, uh, you know, a little unconfident about my DJing ability because I wasn't, I wasn't that great. I didn't even own decks for the first year and a half I was mm -hmm. playing out. I'm always going over to my buddy's house to practice. How uh, long did it actually take you to develop like the technical thing? Gosh, you know, I would have to say I'm on, I'm on the, uh, the back end of like two years with that because it wasn't for like a year and a half that I even bought decks and I went in on a pair of decks with a buddy of mine and. That's when I really started nailing down the technical skills. Some people, uh, I have friends who've just gotten on the turntables, and and I mean that within an hour they're matching beats. And some people are naturally gifted. I really, I was one of those guys who had to really fight to like figure it out, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I don't know, maybe that's why I appreciate it more, you mm -hmm. know, because I really had to fight for it. Yeah. And I guess you could say the guy who who um, kind of brought me up and. I guess gave me the foundation of how to play records. He really ingrained. Who's that? Uh, it's this DJ Hoth. Mm. He was a side trance DJ in Sacramento. He really kind of taught me the, I guess you could say the logistics of building a set mm -hmm. and how to start off, bring it up, and have kind of have a bell curve to it, depending on what time you're playing. And uh, ever since then, I mean, I, I mean. Uh, maybe he might not have taught me all the technical skills, but he, he really put that down. Kind of the basic philosophy. Yeah, of, yeah, you really have to, like, a good DJ can take someone somewhere. I think I'm, a, I'm, I'm pretty good as, as a DJ goes. I mean, there are people out there who are way more talented, who can scratch and, 
and cut. And I mean, I cut, I cut it up, and I do, I do toss, toss some tricks in there. On the technical scale, I, I think there's a lot more people out there that are better. But when it comes to track selection and being able to read a crowd, that's that's the highlight. Yeah, and see, that's that's the thing that I've always, you know, try to draw a distinction between is because. There's a technical side of DJing, but then again, there's there's the art of DJing. But when you're in front of an audience and they're feeding off the DJ, and it's, there's a there's a connection there, I think that is where the real art comes from, you know. And I think I think it's good that there's a continuing scene for for this music. And what, what really got me sad a few years back is it seemed like it just it almost completely died out. I mean, there was almost nothing happening. It did, it did, it really did. I mean, those were like the dark years, you yeah. know. And it seems like now though, I think people got scared. Honestly, I think the the, the mass media came out with a lot of bad reports really uh i mean it was the government too you know they really were trying to scare people on the submission about this music it's i mean one could really right you, put, put it back to the old days of rock and roll right you know i, mean, I remember seeing the i guess it was the uh, nbc dateline or whatever right. their 2020 store or whatever it was oh, yeah, Bert, about you know 14 year old kids doing nitrous at a, at a rave in some little BFE town in middle yeah. America, you know, and that's when I, I th- you know, threw my hands up and said, well, this is, they're, all right, they're just going to try to squash this, you know. Yeah. And, 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 sure, and sure, those things did happen, but th- you, I think there are responsible party throwers and there are people who aren't so responsible right. who are just there to try to make a quick buck and sell drugs yeah. to young kids. And those are the kind of people, obviously, I would want to stay away from. But there's a lot of you people know, who just love this music well, and are willing to, you know, throw well, the parties. The thing is, is that, uh, and, uh, and honestly, I mean, it was... It was getting really big there for a time, and uh, I mean, it, it's almost not a bad thing because what it did was it really kind of like cut out some of those people who really didn't need to be there because the money left. And when the money left, the people who really were about what was about, you right. know, I mean, a lot of people said the scene needed to go back underground again, and it did, mm-hmm. it, and it did in a major way. I mean, 2001 was a tough year, like toughest year I've probably seen. 2002 was pretty bad 2003 was still pretty rough but you know 2004 we saw we saw some life being breathed back into the scene again and it was Mm -hmm. it was interesting and we we said okay here we go again how would you describe the way things are now oh man i mean vibrant flourishing yes (laughs) i mean it's it's like springs come again i was gonna say speaking of spring too how many parties are you booked to play in the next couple of months Mm, gosh i don't know between here and june about 12, I think. I mean, <laughs> Do you have any dates for us so you can drop on where people can come see you? Uh, jeez, uh, locally, God, let me think here. It's, it's hard to remember. Uh, Do you have all this listed on the website? Yeah, I, people do. Can... I have okay. this listed on uh, my MySpace, my MySpace music profile. Okay. Two different profiles, but um, the MySpace music is uh, myspace.com slash gamma the predator. Okay. And that's my pr- music profile. The predator is kind of my... Uh, alias that I go by sometimes. Okay. So uh, that's like where you can find a list of all my up-to-date gigs. Another one is kind of my personal profile and a lot of my flyers are on there too is uh, myspace.com slash gamma 303. Okay. And uh, I mean, you can check either one. Usually they both have flyers, but my actual calendar is on the music profile. Next weekend, what's that? 17th. I'll be back in Reno again uh, at a club called Bliss, which is a really hot new club. So uh, I'll be at Bliss on uh, St. Patty's Day. Okay. Following weekend, I'll be up in Chico on Friday night for uh, a Memories 4 fundraiser. It's a camp out coming this summer, and they're doing a, a fundraiser at a, what is it, glow-in-the-dark, like, uh, putt-putt course. Okay. And then Saturday, March 24th, I'll be in uh, Sacramento for an underground party called Cyber Tribe. Okay. So, and that's going to be in a warehouse, underground, like two, 300 people. So there's plenty of places for people to come see you. Definitely. The biggest show in Sacramento that's coming up, I'd have to say, that r- people really need to check out. And you, you played at their last event, and that's the Channels guys, mm-hmm. uh, Channels Records. Um, they're doing a big show coming up on April 21st, and it's called Spring Fling. And it's going to be, I mean, massive. I mean, they're going to have at least 1,000 people. They have... Some of the best con- best DJs. Yeah, if the Super Duper Bowl party was any indication right. of what's to come, I mean, I that makes me feel really good that there's maybe some new life and some new faces coming in. It's, and they're doing exactly what Sacramento needs, in my opinion. Um, as far as music goes, um, do you also do pr- uh, produce your own music? Have you gotten yeah. into that yet? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, nothing, you know, nothing's released yet. I have one that's like meant to be released, but we're kind of sitting on it. Just 
lack of funds, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. So if there are any A&R people uh, who listen to this on the podcast or whatever right. else, they can contact you through MySpace slash Gamma the Predator and yep. get in touch with you. They'll send you an yep. email and do all that. Definitely. So. Well, thank you very much for coming Excellent. in, man. Yeah, I, no, I, I, I was a pleasure to meet you, and I've heard so much about you, and I, uh, I just was excited to be able to get you to come in and do the show. No, yeah, I mean, really, I've been listening for years. Uh, every time I'm in town on Saturday night, I mean, I'm always listening to your show. Cool, thank you. And uh, I'm really, you know, I was really excited when you uh, wrote. I had actually was just thinking, like, a couple weeks previous to this about how much I would like to be on the show, you know? And well, you have an open invitation to come back, great. so whenever whenever you want to, uh, maybe you can come back in a, in a few weeks' time here and we can talk about some of the newer parties That'd that are, you're awesome. playing and yeah. you, if you would be willing to bring us another mix. And by yeah. the way, that mix that you heard tonight, you did exclusively just for us. Yeah, you, ca- you can't mix. download that, you can't buy it anywhere. So I appreciate that. Thank you very yeah, much. No. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having Well, Gamma the Predator is the MySpace page. And uh, make sure you go check out one of his events because uh, his new CD uh, that he actually has out of mixing is called Ghetto Yellow. And uh, he told me that uh, to make sure to tell everybody that because you can go get one of the CDs at any of the events you see him play at. So, Gamma, thank you very much. We will definitely have him back. Um, in just a couple of weeks, I believe we're going to have Ben from Skills in the House. He's going to be talking about the Popsicle Party. And uh, a few weeks after that, We'll have the crew from Channels back to tell us about that spring fling party. It's going to be fun. Lots going on this spring. Thanks for tuning in and checking out X-Beats tonight. I'm DJ David X. Don't forget the podcast, MP3 download, up on the website Monday morning of this program. That's www.djdavidx.com. That's the where you can go download it. Um, I'm back with you in a couple hours at 7 a.m. for the Retro Revival. Uh, we uh, rewind the clocks back. Actually, I should I should <laughs> I should preface that by saying we rewind the clocks back musically s- later in the morning. But tonight, don't forget to set your clocks ahead an hour. We're starting uh, daylight savings time early this year. It's got me all screwed up. I don't know what the hell's going on, but turn your clock up an hour, okay? <laughs> I'll talk to you all next Saturday night at 10 p.m. Till then, uh, just be good to each other, love each other, and try not to do anything stupid, huh? I'm out. Bye-bye. X-Beats is brought to you by Twisted. Hand-blown glass, body jewelry, club wear, and more. Get lifted at Twisted in Midtown Sack or Citrus Heights. Tune in again next Saturday night at 10 for more X-Beats with DJ David X. Only on 106.5 KWOD Sacramento.